Hello everyone, Genesis Rider here, bringing you episode 4 of my gameplay review series, where I take gameplay submitted by you, the community, and go over it with tips and tricks on how to be better in online matchmaking. Now, this film was submitted by Lurker Zero, also known as Lurker Zero, on YouTube, and it is one of many Adrift submissions that I did receive. In fact, this is Lurker Zero's second Adrift clip or gameplay that he submitted to me, and I would like to state two things. This is the longest gameplay I have reviewed so far, but I will try to pack it as much as I can with tips and tricks. And um, second of all, it is okay to start games with uh, teammates lost. I would like to point out, however, that during the majority of the game, Lurker Zero only has two teammates. So we will also be tailoring these tips and tricks more towards Slayer and for only having two teammates to work with, which does simplify the commentary a little bit. Off the star here, Lurker Zero shows exactly why you want to be loading out with mobility on the map of drift so that you can sprint infinitely to the overshield and pick it up. Now, I would like to state, Lurker Zero, that you could have um, jumped here, um, right about here, and jumped over this railing to cut off, you know, shave off maybe half a second of you getting to the overshield, but that's not a big deal. But right off, right off here, I want you to notice something. It is correct that you want to drop down here and immediately engage the enemy players. However, I had to watch this several times for me to actually understand what occurred here. As you're dropping here, I'm assuming that right here, you are not looking at your radar. Okay? The reason why is because this player is currently appearing on the same level as you are, meaning he is obviously on this level, okay? on the same level as you are. However, you drop, and right now, I think you look at your radar. And the guy is appearing above you on your radar. You can see that little curved arrow above him, the guy right in front of you. Okay, So you're assuming that this guy is in the hallway above you. Okay, And I want to point out to you that you are on a level below him. This is considered a lower level. So he can appear above you. But here is one of the ways you could have t been able to tell if this guy, uh, this guy who just completely nicked some of your shields here, this guy was not in the upper attic above you. As you're dropping here, you notice how this player is pushed up all the way back here. Okay, notice, and this is going to be obvious to more advanced players, notice how this hallway is straight. This guy is too far away from you to be in this upper hallway because he is along this curve. Notice how this hallway sort of curves around here. He is too far back. He would be over here if he was in the hallway above you, possibly. All right, and I just want to point that out to you. That Again, that's an advanced tip that you will know if you are more of an advanced player. That comes from experience with playing the game. It's not a big harp, but it is something that you will get better at as the game goes along, and it is critical to dominating on a drift. Cleaning up that player, you do want to go for the sniper rifle here, and that is what you end up doing. And you do end up getting some nice shots, if some questionable shots, on your teammates here. Um, thankfully, um, friendly fire is disabled, I believe, because you do show your team out several times. And I do want to point out something early on that's in this film so that you guys are aware. I had some, several questions on Adrift about maintaining this area, whether you should stay at this area with Sniper Rifle. Most beginner players grab the Sniper Rifle and then generally hang out in this area. And this is the wrong thing you want to be doing. The best places to snipe from are from this window right here, looking through at the enemy window, and then moving back over here, looking at this window. Especially in flag, players have a really negative tendency to sit here and watch the enemy base and their flag across here and then peek out into this hallway and then move back. The problem is you can be easily flanked here. And here is the strategy I want to give you guys overall. This area, especially in Team Slayer, on a drift, and this also applies to the opposite area, which is the same because this map is symmetrical, this area should only be being used for temporary movement traversal across the map. This is not an ideal area or position for you to hold because the bases where people mostly spawn in this game are opposite you, okay? If you, you can hold this area, okay? Sort of holding this area because you have three points of access, this hallway, this hallway, and back into the base. But if you're standing right here, it is much more unlikely that you'll get flanked because no one's going to spawn here, most likely, especially in Team Slayer. In Flag, that is very different. But in Team Slayer, people aren't likely to spawn behind you. But here, okay, people could spawn in this space, charge you through this hallway, 
or spawn on this base or charge you for this through this hallway. You do not, you do not, I repeat, you do not want to be hanging out in this area. Moving on with the commentary, I hope that gives some explanation to why I'm just really against some of the plays you make here. Now, again, you have a grenade here, okay? Now I'm going to harp on everyone's grenades because this is a perfect time to grenade. Pull out your BR, throw a grenade right here at this hallway, watch it bounce straight into this crouching enemy player, and just run around the corner, corner and shoot him. As it is, this guy does stuff that he should not do to you. You definitely, definitely have... You should easily be able to see that this guy has no shields here because of his flickering and the hit marker. You should be aiming at his head right here. You actually end up stopped firing a little bit. Um, but all of this is made up for the fact that you land in one of the most fabulous Spartan poses ever. Um, you know, and um, uh, yeah, I don't have much to say about that. Anyway, respawning, um, you move back to the base. And one of the ways you can tell if this is your base is because there are flames on top of this. Now, I want you to notice a glitch in theater mode where the flames don't appear after you've watched the film a certain number of times, but you know that you're on this base. You're in flame base, and you see, just see your teammate die here down the hall, and your another one of your teammates charges down the hall. You need to push this. This guy is so weak, it's not even funny. Now, I do realize that you're conceptually aware that there are two enemy players on your radar here. I'm not saying you want to charge head on into them. I want to I want you to look push down this hallway a little bit and see if that guy who's weak will pop out and and you'll be able to get the kill cuz this guy is obviously like somehow confused with someone else. As it is here, you do end up hanging back. But right here, okay? You've hung back to the point where you, I know you're not going to charge those two players down the hall. Your teammate just died and your your two teammates are across the hallway from you, okay? This guy you need to wholeheartedly pursue and go after. When you are down a player like this, you've got to go after players who are alone like that. As it is, you charge two players who are two people on your radar. And while you do end up backing down here again, I like this play, um, right here is where I begin to think you don't need to be using dexterity. Um, once again, you don't commit any kills and you end up backing up here. A, 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 great, a great getaway, but you don't need to be using dexterity. Look how low your ammo is. You are playing extremely passive, long range and passive, just sort of staying back from the enemy. And that is a viable type of gameplay. However, two things I want to state here. You need to be using ammo if you're going to be doing that. And number two, you only have two teammates, which means that type of gameplay is not advisable because it means you're depending on your teammates to go into the fray and actually get the kills that you can't complete. Which, you end up getting an assist here, pretty nice, but your teammate is using a storm rifle, okay? This is this is not a good idea. And you end up missing a sniper rifle here that was on your on your HUD right there. That's, again, that's an advanced tip that you'll, you'll get better at recognizing when weapons pop up. You do have three teammates here, but later on you don't. You end up having only two. Um, the advanced tip of your sniper rifle popping up on your HUD as you crossed over there and forgot about it is just something you'll recognize with experience. Now, I want to back you up here and notice how your teammate is charging in here with his assault, with his storm rifle, and you see this guy behind you and you do some good shots. The grenade wasn't necessary because he had already been charged and meleeed by your teammate, but you have another grenade. You have full shield and you have half a clip. Throw your grenade at the floor right here and wait as, watch as this guy comes around the corner and you're able to easily clean him up after your grenade does a lot of damage to his shield. Instead, you end up backing up and getting hit from behind. And here's immediately what I would do. Lift over. Flank this player from behind. He'll never see it coming. Okay, Your teammate is already engaged with him. Now, how this situation does play out, your teammate does trade with that player. So you see your teammate die and then back up. But I don't even think you knew that the enemy player was dead. I don't think you were watching your, um, I don't think you knew that. So you probably should have lifted there. But as it is, you're sort of hanging out in the same general area where you should not be hanging out. And I want you to notice your grenade toss right here. Don't throw grenades right here in this corner. You have plenty of space to throw it at this wall. I'm dead serious. This wall is viewed as a flat space, okay? This wall right here is viewed as a flat space. You need to be aiming at this general wall so that it bounces into this area and explodes. As it is, you end up getting the kill via 
your headshot, not your grenades. You end up crossing over the sniper rifle once again on the bottom center of your screen. You cross over the sniper rifle again on your right on your HUD. But another sniper responds, so you get that. And I think you may end up getting it. No, it's actually already despawned. Um, now you may end up wondering why was that sniper rifle on the ground for so long here? Well, it's a little known fact that if you stay near a weapon or you're interacting or walking over or looking at a weapon, it will stay on the map for a little bit longer. And that's the reason why it stayed there for so long was because you were sort of hanging out in that general area, crossing over it multiple times. It could have been picked up by an enemy player and whatever, but um, you get up getting the whip shot and your teammate comes in saving your butt. You do a pretty good job of using a push pack to stay away from these grenades. But here is a critical point where you really need to be lifting, dude. You need to be sprinting for this lift. Once again, watch how three enemy players follow the one guy you killed already. This is very indicative of this map. They all spawn in this base. They all charge at you. Now, you need to be lifting behind these guys. And I'm not saying just charge in from behind and, you know, try to charge in and get all the kills. No, you just need to be staying from behind here, creeping up on them and sniping them from here. Okay? But instead, you end up hanging behind here for way too long, even backing down, trying to you know, regain your shields. And you end up, this guy fools you with the hologram. I do not know how many times in this film. And I'll point it out a little bit later to give you some tips on how you can recognize a hologram. So I feel like you need it. Great body shot on that guy. Again, it's hard to aim for the head here, so I'm not going to criticize that too much. And good shot, uh, another good shot will appear here as you get a body shot on this guy. Um, you end up getting no shields going back, but your teammate has damage boost. And what you need to be doing here is recognizing that there's no players in this hallway. You walk way too much into this hallway before realizing that, oh, this is a bad idea, and now you're going to go back now. Okay? And then you end up, oh, oh, what am I going to do? Oh, this, the overshield spawned. I'm going to go for overshield now. You see how you need to understand where you're going. And this is, again, something that comes with practice. I'm not going to harp on it too much. But it is something where you need to be knowing where you're going. And right here, what you should be doing is charging the living crud out of enemy players. Okay? Don't grab your, your ordinance just yet. Charge the living crowd of enemy players. Great job saving your teammate here. I mean, phenomenal job. Really lining those shots up and getting the body shots, even though he had an overshield. Because if he had an overshield, it wouldn't matter whether you're shooting at his head. So you, you aimed at his body, and that is good, because you will get damage on him. Right there, you're just trying to save your teammate. You're not trying to get some clutch headshot because he has an overshield. You know? Now, I really want to question your play here. Okay, you you just picked up more sniper rifle. Okay, and what you're going to be doing with that is you're going to go for the sniper rifle. Okay, you need to give the rest this sniper to a teammate. I'm dead serious. Let your teammate get the sniper rifle and call down the railgun. If you are good with the railgun, you will get far more kills with it than you will with the scatter shot. Having said that. You do have part of an overshield, so I can't completely fault you with this call down, but I will guarantee you one thing. If you are good with the railgun, you will get far more kills with that than you will ever get with a scatter shot. If you would call down a shotgun here, I might be tempted to say you had made somewhat of a good play, but as it, as it is a scatter shot, don't go for the scatter shot, dude. I'm dead serious. It's way too inconsistent. It's it streams that it shoots out are dramatically different each time, meaning that you could get a one-shot kill at medium range at one top point, but then later on you could not get a one-shot kill. It's just better to not go with the scatter shot. With this current configuration you're running, you can charge in enemy players like this and afford to lose your overshield, some of your overshield here, but you are forced to either engage at a very, very long range or very, very close range. I like how you're supporting your teammate here. Again, you're not going for the headshot. Not sure why. You need to be looking at just just at this box level. Okay, just above this box level, because you can see just above the boxes here, and aiming at their head. Instead, you're aiming at this below, sort of this black line, instead of aiming at a little bit closer to this thicker black line on the wall. That's just stuff you need to be aware of. You need to be aiming a little bit higher at their sniper rifle. Like that. You were aiming straight at his head there. However, you end up aiming at this guy's body. Once again, I'm going to point out how you end up waiting for several, several seconds here, dude, looking at his body. You are never going to get the headshot on this guy that's about to spurn around the corner. Now, you do end up reloading here, which is another thing you shouldn't have done. Don't aim for this lower 
um, white line. Aim for the, the second light line, white line, dude. Um, you reload here, okay? And you wouldn't have gotten the kill anyway because you were going for his body. But you end up reloading. You don't need to reload one, one bullet when you have dexterity. If you're waiting on the guy to peek around the corner, wait that extra second, okay? Now, I did, I did like how you unzoomed there in the middle of that um, sort of um, you were, you unzoomed a little bit there to to make sure to check your radar. That's good. Um, and this 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 second guy you go for, you do end up aiming more for his head, whipping the scope, and then correcting and sort of trying to move into the shot. But um, that was better. But you didn't end up getting a shot because your teammate was on him. No no fault there. No big deal. Um, but you do have a scatter shot, and it se it seems to me right here that you 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 completely change tactics. You realize. Okay, this sniper rifle thing may not be working out too well. I'm going to charge in with my scatter shot. This is exactly the reason why you don't use the scatter shot right here. Okay? You cannot seem to get these kills. That would have killed him if you had been using a shotgun. Do not call down a scatter shot. And I want to notice your plays here. You end up getting some long range shots in this guy, but reloading, and then instead of, you have a thruster pack. What I would have done here is I would have run straight back hiding behind this box here, so this guy in the hallway with the sniper rifle at the end can't see you, and I would have run straight for this box, jumped and thruster packed over it, and run away right behind here, and regain your shield, possibly going for this overshield, which is spawned top middle, okay? But instead, you end up coming out from behind the boxes, and immediately you get sniped. Immediately, okay? This is because you are, you are out from behind the box, okay? This guy can see you. You have to be literally hugging this wall and running straight and jumping over this box and, and thruster packing. I don't think that guy would have sniped you if you had been doing that. But as it is, you end up being sniped here. You respawn and then get a very lucky respawn. Your teammate grabs over shield. And this is confusing to me. What, what is with this little fake backwards here that you do right here? Nobody is over here. Okay, you just spawn here. Your teammate grabbed over shield and is obviously rushing the opposite direction towards the enemy players. Get over to him as fast as you can. You only have two teammates, okay? Now, I love your flank here, how you let your teammate go off to the right, and then you go off to the left here. You end up grenading yourself. Unfortunately, that's just grenade timing and stuff. You'll improve as you toss more of them. But once again, look how you're going for long-range battles, and you do end up getting a kill here. You need to be loading out with ammo, dude. You, if, you're, if you're not charging the enemy players or you're not more aggressive than you're being in this game, there is no need to load out with dexterity. There really, really isn't. Especially because you're a teammate down and finding handle is going to be a little that much harder. Um, now, I would like to point out here that you needed to maintain this position. You need to maintain this area because your teammate is pressing them from this angle. You have angles on the enemy players right now. That's called having angles, having viewpoints on the enemy team. You needed to try to get this kill um, here on this player. Um, as it is, you end up backing up and running away, sort of playing really passive. You're only able to get um, a few shots on players who overextend here. And you end up once again faking back. And oh yes, the sniper rifle spawn. I, I think, again, you need to be a little bit more purposeful with your movement. This guy obviously already has a sniper. As soon as you see that HUD icon disappear, he already has a sniper. Um, great job trying to assist your teammate there. Um, even though you did end up shooting your teammate, you do trade back to the bolt shot. Great, great job. I was afraid you were going to keep the assault rifle there. Now, I want you to notice right here, there's no reason to zoom. Not only is there no reason to zoom at this, at this range, no reason whatsoever, but you have two teammates in front of you. The guy in camo, which you may not have noticed, and this guy. And you have two guys imminently charging up on your radar. Okay? And this is deadly because you look down your radar, you look down your scope, and you complete. You can't do your radar while you're in, in your scope. You're using, well, I'm sorry, while you're scoped in, you can't view your radar. So you get immediately surprised there. Moving on with the commentary, um, we are uh, almost reaching the halfway point here. Sorry for its length. Um, you are three kills ahead of the enemy players. You toss a great grenade here. But when you're throwing a grenade, and you, when you see a guy like this on your radar. You see the guy on your radar and you immediately toss the grenade. You need to toss the grenade and jump at him. Don't back away, dude. This is a perfect grenade. Okay, go at him. Start pressing him. He's weak. You know, I don't care if there's two players there. Your teammate is trying to charge around here as well. So, um, you do end up dropping here in the overshield spawn. It's really unfortunate, but um, you do end up getting the kill, but the guy drops and you're 
getting a little too tunnel vision on the enemy players. I would have stayed top middle there. I would not have dropped. And right here is just another little thing I want to point out. This will come as you improve your reaction speed and time in Halo, but there was no need to toss this first grenade, which is a little advanced to assume that you would know that. Um, a lot of players are going to toss a grenade here, but um, the second grenade is unwarranted. You are not going to be able to back around this corner fast enough to toss this grenade at the floor. I like how you angle the second grenade at the floor, but it's not going to do you any good as you end up getting cleaned up. Just focus on on nailing your BR shots there, okay? And later on in this film, you do end up focusing your BR shots in a very specific situation. Great job of the enemy player watching that window and blaming you there. Um, that was really good by him. Now, if you lose the lead here, grabbing the sniper rifle, your teammate teammates are both bottom center, and you end up hanging around in this area again. I'm just not exactly sure why. You eventually push up here, um, and you end up getting... Now, watch this enemy player. Look how he uses the roof above him to stay above your shot. That is phenomenal. That is really good. You can do that in this window here, and you can do that over here in this window here. And that's really good when you see a sniper to jump like that because your head is completely outside his viewpoint. Notice how there's a slant here in the floor, and that's why you can use that height advantage to cover your head using the barrier. Really good job here. That's a really advanced tip, actually. A lot of players don't know that when they first start out. Now your teammate, John, is uh, gaining his shields there. You throw a grenade that completely isn't necessary. And again, it just doesn't seem like you know what you're doing here. You're hanging around this area. You want to be watching this window and then pushing up to the other window and watching this window as well, okay? And then moving back and forth between this. Before, Obviously, before you would look, peek out and zoom, you'd be watching your radar to see if anybody spawned in this building. As it is, you're still hanging around on the side of the map, and you're sprinting up into the center. You never want to be top center with your sniper rifle, unless you know the uh, uh, overshield's about to spawn. It's just a bad place to be. And you end up getting a few good shots, but I want you to notice what would have happened here. This guy is looking towards the center of the map. What would have happened if you would have gone, and you had actually been peeking through this window at him, and, look, and zoomed right before you came around the corner and zoomed at him? You would have totally blamed his face off. Okay, or you would have hit him in the body like you always seem to be aiming. Um, but you would have gotten this player and not gotten one shot here. You would have been able to actually get this kill. Um, and this is confusing to me. You do end up r running away here. And I think you should have gotten into this hallway or under this stairway to regain your shield. But you end up going way too far. Y you end up running completely away from the battle. And your teammates do gain the lead here. But then you immediately lose the lead as both of them die. Okay. And, and again, this is just two red X's on your HUD. You needed to sort of stay or hang, hang around that area. The reason why is because you need to be cleaning up these kills that your teammates are trying to, you know, get, basically. Now, three, two, one, and uh, Blaine. Uh, the reason why I knew this was going to come, and I actually said three, two, one, Blaine when I first watched this uh, the four film times ago when I watched this... Uh, uh, it's like I wanted two hours ago when I watched this film for the first time, I predicted that you were going to get blamed here. Because right here, you see the canister that is right here. Whenever there is an empty canister right here, and grenades don't spawn here because this is not a grenade canister. Whenever there is an empty canister, you can guarantee that the one guy has picked up a weapon. What's the only weapon that spawns here? A sniper rifle. And you see the canister blow up right here and disintegrate to a shower of sparks. Okay, you know this guy just grabbed the sniper rifle, but instead you look to your right. I, I think that's just something, I don't even think you realize that that's what, what, what happened. And he's right there, the sniper rifle, and he blame, blames you. And again, that's just something you need to recognize that that, and I don't know why you're doing a victory melee here. Um, typically when you melee, it's a victory melee. Uh, not a big deal, but just kind of puzzling to me. But when, I've watched this film so many times, um, just puzzling to me why that happened. Now right here, you needed to drop way earlier, okay? You, you could have saved your teammate, saved the living crud out of your teammate if you would have jumped over to this platform. And as your teammate came pursuing this player, thrown grenades behind him at the guy pursuing him. Instead, you end up waiting way too long here. As your teammate pursues a kill, gets the kill, and then is a, ends up dying from behind because you really haven't, you know, pursued this kill. Now, this is where I love what you do with your battle rifle as you drop here you know that this guy is about to murder you with an assault rifle and you 
steadily BR him in the head. If you don't miss your shots, you're able to really get a fast kill here with the BR. That is a really good job. Maintaining a steady, steady aim on that player as he just charges you like an idiot. Great job there. Right here, you want to be pushing in with your teammate. Not, no reason to use the attack. Push in with your teammate and get that kill. Try to make sure that he, and once again, you need to be pushing up with your teammate. Going in, why are you aiming at his body? He, he has no shield. Aim at his head. Um, why are you backing down here, dude? Like, your two teammates are charging. You need to be with your teammates. You're two kills down. You cannot afford to have them die here. You need to charge up and attack, attack these players. Now, I know this is kind of contradictory to what I've been saying. Don't stay in this area. Don't stay in this area. Well, your teammates are already here, so you kind of already have to. But you should be lifting, okay? Lift to where you're behind the enemy players. And this is an advanced strategy I want to I share with you. If you lifted and both of your teammates died behind you, and these two guys are coming around the corner, they're coming for you. Both of these guys are coming for you. One of them has an overshield. You're screwed, right? Well, you're not quite screwed. You can jump onto this little box right here, then crouch at the top of your jump, jumping on top of this box, and then jump across to this platform, possibly getting away into the attic. That's how you escape the situation. And that's why you want to hang around here for half a second after you peek around the window and throw a grenade. Um, but uh, as it is, you end up just staying around here and you end up getting flanked. I believe once again, as you're way too tunnel vision, zooming, you end up getting flanked again by a concussion rifle guy. This guy knows what he's doing, um, curving around the map to attack you. And I want you to notice how the, none of the enemy players are near you here. You spawn on the opposite side of the map, the opposite sniper spawn, and yet you zoom and are watching this hall. I don't know why that occurs. I think you realize that, but the fastest thing you need to be doing here is lifting. You needed to have from, when you grab the sniper rifle here, you needed to have lifted into either base. I would definitely want you to lift over here into this base because when you lift here, you can be immediately looking at this doorway. If you are if you lift um, across into this base, uh, you would be lifting right next to the doorway, possibly getting surprised by someone around the corner. But as it is, you do charge to the center of the map, so let's go with that. Um, uh, charging across the map here. You get into an okay position here, and you do get a one-shot. Now, I want you to notice here what you should have done. You should have gone here. As you got that one-shot, throw a grenade right at this wall, and then pull out your BR and try to headshot him. I know the enemy player has a sniper rifle. That's why you want to stay behind this wall here. It's all about angles, grenades, and using your radar in a drift. You do end up backing up for the overshield, but your teammate already has it, and you really want to be charging in here. You need... You don't want to be hanging back with your sniper rifle here because your teammate has an overshield. You try to do so something with the sniper rifle here. Um, I, again, you need to be just charging in. Get, get this kill right here. Get this kill. You have this guy. You already have a shot with him on your radar. You could have pushed up on him much sooner right after the grenade went off. Um, great job avoiding this player. However, once again, you end up running completely away from the battle. You have full shields. You can chart. You can attack this guy. Okay, you really do. You can attack this player, um, and you do end up figuring that out eventually. As you eventually reload and figure out, okay, but by that point, your teammate's already dead. Okay, and you can kill this guy. You you can charge in and get this kill. But you notice how it's too late because your their enemy players have already spawned on this guy. Now they're going to grab a sticky death. Okay, and you get sorted from behind because once you again. You are tunnel visioned on a spot you really should not be on. You should have lifted over and tried to attack him. And I'm going to say this a lot, okay? And I think this is one of the better things about this film, is that you really do want to be using those lifts. Now, with almost a minute left remaining, only five kills for the enemy team to win, it is crucial that you make some plays here. And right here, I want to notice your excellent grenade and your headshot, but how you do not go after this guy. You, you, I think it's because you got your ordinance and you were distracted by it. You don't go after this player in the lower hallway. Look at his shield strength, dude. You could have easily gotten him. Okay, and this is this is a mistake. Like that's a mistake because you're getting too concerned with your ordinance. And once again, you call down a shotgun. Okay, it's better than a scatter shot, no doubt. But this is forcing you to get close to the enemy players. What you need right now is a weapon 
where you can dominate them from a semi-medium range without actually having to maintain full-on frontal contact, possibly getting meleeed and getting killed. It's much likely that you're going to die while using a shotgun. The sticky debt, dude. Holy crud. The sticky debt is amazing on this map. I'm dead serious. The sticky debt is amazing. Call that down. You'll be able to, like, if you had thrown a sticky grenade right there behind you at those two kills, you would have gotten both of them, you know? As it is, you have to charge now, kind of, because you have the shotgun. And, um, you needed to, you just needed to call down sticky debt here. Thank, thank goodness you don't fire at that guy at his, at his hologram here. I want you to notice something about a hologram. I want to point this out to you. See how this guy has a weapon on his back? You can easily see that. Look at his hologram. It doesn't have anything. In fact, he doesn't have any secondary weapon on him whatsoever. You can be looking at his um, his side of his uh, calf there, and he doesn't have a secondary weapon. That is a dead giveaway for a hologram. Holograms never carry secondaries. Thankfully, you do end up knowing that it's a hologram here, but you embarrassingly miss so many shots here, dude. It, it really... I was holding my breath during this entire engagement. Use your entire shotgun clip to kill that guy. He should have only required two shots. Um, and right here, you do a great job of noticing this guy lifting up. I was about to tell you you should go down and attack them, but you do a great job. This is very important to notice. I know it's only 20 seconds, 7 seconds left in the film. Let me give you some few tips and tricks here. Notice how you whip your reticle here, and you fire into a blank wall. You know you're doing the wrong thing because the second shot you make is perfect. Instead of using your left, I'm sorry, your right thumb, you move straight into the shot, barely aiming at all, and fire your second shot straight into his body exactly as you should. Right here, okay? Barely aiming at all, you just move straight over into his body. Now, this is a bad call to pick up the sniper rifle here. You should trade the sniper rifle for your shotgun, okay? To maintain a long range. It, because here's the deal all the enemy players are on your the floor right now you're not going to get a good sniping position and you re realize that right here okay and i think what you realize is oh my gosh two kills away and we could win the game i gotta charge in there and make something happen which is exactly what you should we, what you have to do except you now have only a close close range weapon and a long long range weapon you needed to switch in this in this last position you only need to have a mid or close or a mid or long range weapon okay because you're on the last two kills and they're all bottom middle so you have to make something happen here and you needed to just end up staying up here and providing support fire for your team with your br you didn't need to charge in here with your shotgun um, you do end up getting the kill but your teammate gets, ends up being taken out right there uh gourd on your radar now i would like to state that i did watch gourd's perspective on the last 20 seconds or so and he was trying his butt off I've never seen someone stay alive that long with the jetpack and the assault rifle, bottom middle on a drift with so many players trying to get him. It was pretty insane. The fact that he finally dies there is pretty incredible because he was trying. Um, so it's not his fault necessarily. But anyway, I hope that gives you some good tips and tricks on how to improve your gameplay on a drift. Guys, sorry for the longer film, but if you want to submit your own gameplay like this, click on the annotation in the top right-hand corner that's appearing right now. And you can go to that video. It's also linked in the description. Go to that video. It will explain how you submit your clips to me or your films for me to review. I like close gameplay like this on um, capture the flag or objective types, especially with radar. Um, so hope you guys enjoy this fourth gameplay review. Hopefully the next one will be a little bit shorter. And I'll see you on the next capture or whatever I end up recording. Peace, guys.